This is The Win, special edition raw, where I share my personal stories of failures and successes as a serial entrepreneur. My views on how to start and grow a business using today's top online marketing and sales strategies. So welcome to The Win, raw with me, your host, Heather Havenwood. Are you over 45, 60? Are you relying on the traditional medical field to help you feel great and get you back to a balanced body? Good luck with that. At e2lab.com, Dr. Don Salyer got sick of people complaining about bloating, inflammation, and feeling sluggish. He has created unique, potent, and powerful non-pharmaceutical supplements to help the body rebalance, detox, and get back to being healthy. Go to e2lab.com, getting you back to healthy and balanced. Are you a business owner that has a website but not tech savvy? Do you feel like a hostage to your web guy? The better question is, do you have a money funnel so people come to your page and give you money while you sleep? No? Then go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Imagine having a money site, not a website, for your self-published book, e-commerce products, local practitioners like chiropractors or lawyers. Get a money site, not a website. Go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Raw with Heather Havenwood. Happy, happy Monday, everyone. So, um, so first of all, I'm, I'm re-recording this because, um, my mic is all messed up. So, uh, what that means is like it got spiked. And so I, I'm laughing because, um, my producer's telling me to talk softly. (laughs) I don't know if I could do that. I'm going to try though. Okay. So here's the deal. I want to share with you a couple of things that's going on. The number one thing I want to share with you is something I'm doing with Linda Stevens. I've hired her. She's an IPPP um, MPC pro. What that means is she's the top of her game in MPC figure. She has one pro as not only as an MPC, but also at IFBB. Now you're thinking, what does that mean? That means this girl has, has a rock and body <laughs> and she has mastered how to have a lean tight body with a little bit of fat, barely any fat, and um, consistently been able to do that year after year over the age of 45, which is even more impressive. And the reason why I think that's more impressive is because women over 40, it's way, it's, it's harder. It's just more challenging, men too. And so I have now hired her and I'm doing my second show and now countdown 16 weeks. We're calling it Sexy Boss Slim Down. We are doing a Facebook Live every single Friday. It's her and I, and it's I am literally revealing everything. I'm telling you my weight. I'm telling you how much I'm working out. I'm telling you um, what I'm eating. I'm, tell, I'm confessing when I cheat, which I did cheat this weekend. I am telling you it all. And it's an opportunity for you to ask her questions. It's an opportunity for me to uh, get coached, uh, ask her questions as well. I mean, this is like, I'm literally doing Facebook live of my coaching sessions with Linda. So we're doing uh, 17 weeks out. We started last week. We're on week 16. So that means 16 weeks out. She's, I've got to drop about 20 pounds or at least, at least I would say seven to 8 percent body fat, maybe 10 percent. I got to lose. Um, I'm in pretty good shape, but it's that last 15, it's that last two or 3% body fat that is literally the most challenging. So we have 16 weeks left and I really want to take you on this journey with me of what it really takes to be a, a fitness competitor. Yes, you need to work out. Yes, you have to drink a lot of water. Yes, you have to do cardio. Honestly, that's not the hardest part for me. The most challenging part is the consistency of the food um, and it living in the kitchen. So that's my, my challenging part right now that I'm going through. And I'm going to share with you on Facebook Live this week. I'm going to share with you how much I weigh, <laughs> which women don't like to do. I'm going to share with you what I'm eating, what I'm not eating, what I'm doing, what's working, what's not working, and how I need to be tweaked and how I'm going to be a little being, being coached live. And you get to ask her questions as well. So you can check that out on my Facebook page, Heather Havenwood. I'm sorry, Facebook. Yeah, facebook.com forward slash Heather Havenwood and facebook.com forward slash Heather Ann, which is my personal. Um, we're doing Facebook Live. I'll be sharing that there. So I really would encourage you. We're also turning into a podcast called Sexy Boss Slim Down. And there is some really cool stuff that's happening in my company that I can't even share. It's like secret, secret, secret. But soon I will be sharing. And I'm actually really uh, excited about it. So I hope that, I just really hope that you, uh, you just listen in and 
because it's going to be announced about a week or two. Um, it's super excited. I can't share. Okay. So what is this raw show about today? Sales, 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 sales. I had the opportunity to get interviewed by a, ge- a gentleman who runs a podcast called Sales Babble. Sales Babble is focused on sales. He has more of a corporate background, a long term, was it what I call a long term sales cycle. And one of the reasons I'm sharing this interview with you is because it's rare that I I get someone that understands sales and persuasion and asks me a lot of detailed questions about it and really pulls a lot of huge nuggets and lessons and strategies and tips out of me. It's, it's kind of rare I get a really good interviewer like that. So um, I wanted to, instead of me just sharing with you what like my lessons, I thought I'd say, hey, why don't I share with my listeners someone interviewing me, right? He's kind of like, he's like a really good Barbara Walters. Um, the reason why Barbara Walters, I think, was so phenomenal, she had this ability to really pull nuggets out of people and really pull the truth and pull uh, life lessons, good, bad, and indifferent, out of people. That's That was really her strength. And I, it's an art, really. And so he did a great job. It's rare that I find someone who does such a great job interviewing me. So I wanted to share it with you. It's with Sales Babble. You can go to the original uh, podcast at salesbabble.com and type in Heather Havenwood, or you can just listen now um, as he interviews me to uh, really about sales, uh, the art of persuasion, uh, how I traveled the country doing 450 events over a seven year period, and how I learned the art of no like and trust. You know, in a corporate environment, you have a really long sales cycle, sometimes three, six, nine months, sometimes a year with really large companies. When you are in a place where it's one-on-one sales, you don't have that kind of luxury. You have 90 minutes to bring someone from complete stranger to giving you $3,000 or $4,000 or $10,000 or $12,000. So this was a really an interesting interview, and I really want to share it with you, and hopefully you'll learn something for yourself. Okay, everyone, this is Heather Havenwood with The Raw. Here you go. Today we meet Heather Ann Havenswood a longtime sales professional who's mastered the persuasive skills of assertive selling. In this episode, we dig into the power of emotion when selling and the things that you can do to avoid being aggressive yet still close a sale. I like to think of sales babble as a conversation in a Starbucks, two people just meeting and and sharing over a cup of coffee and talking a little bit of shop. That's what this episode does, and it nails it head on. So... With no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Heather Ann. Are you ready to babble? I'm ready to babble. We've been babbling for quite a while already, haven't we? (laughs) (laughs) We've talked about politics. Yes. We've talked about travel. We've talked about Texas. (laughs) A lot of stuff. (laughs) We've been babbling for a while. You just guys just got to join us. You got to join us. I'm so happy to have you here today um, because uh, your book, The Sexy Boss Book, was just re-released. Yes. Um, and that is terrific. That means you must have sold a few, eh? Yes, I have. It's been, a, it's been a great run. I just released it in the print version a couple weeks ago, and I added some things and tools to it. So, um, yeah, it's been kind of fun. I'm... To give people a sense of what this is like, I actually have uh, – I'm actually on page 166 here. Oh, thank <laughs> <It you>. is, <laughs> I've not like read all of them, but um, it me. says, um, I'm strong. I don't care if that makes me a bitch, and you should feel the same way. Mm. Unfortunately, many women are caught in a catch-22 double standard. Mm-hmm. To be really strong in business, you have to be tough. And being strong, tough women sometimes make you a bitch in other people's eyes well to that i have just two words who cares yeah yeah it's well and a lot of that is because i grew up i started in in outside sales when i was like 21 in sbc global which was pretty much all male dominated and i didn't get like a pamphlet or a manual you know on how to work in corporate environment and how to work with a lot of men and so i just was doing my thing and then like rumors would come around and like all this stuff in my head that I would hear, well, I heard you were this and you were that. And I didn't, it really affected me then. And I didn't understand it. And then moving on when, back in 2001, when I started traveling the country with men, it was me and four guys, literally every, um, you know, four days a week, 
uh, breakfast, noon, and night. You know, we breakfast, lunch, and dinner, basically. We were literally traveling together. And again, I'd hear these rumors, like, you need to be this way and strong and assertive in sales. Because we were in sales. And if we didn't sell, we didn't eat. You know, but then right. at the moment that the sales door closed, I needed to be a certain way. And it was really strange for me because I'm like, why is this double standard? I didn't understand it. And so over the years, I've had to really grapple with it. And there was a period of my life that I, if you would say, I looked like a dude. What I mean by that is I was covering me up because the only mentors I had were men. And so I would look like them and act like them and speak like them and possibly wear, you know, more uh, conservative clothes like turtlenecks. And, and, and so I was trying to cover up my femininity. The moment I started to release that and go, who I am is a woman and I'm strong you know, one, I own my power, but the other part of that is that more people, one, are attracted to me, but then, then you have the naysayers. And at this point in my life, I don't even really hear the naysayers at this point, but they're still there because there is this weird dynamic in society um, that's just like, if you're strong and assertive, we love it, but, you know, don't do this and this because now you're a bee. You know, so there's this little balance that a woman has to be aware of that they have to be when they own their powers of feminine, feminine power. I think they're stronger. They're way stronger. I don't get those words anymore that you who you are as a bee at this point, you know, so that's why I call it who I am as a sexy boss. It's a different it's a different energy to it. And when you have a different energy, the sales, the sales environment changes inside the dynamic, the social dynamic. So what do you mean you don't hear this anymore? Is it because you've changed or society's changed or, or what? A couple things. One, I surround myself with people that just love me for who I am. But number two, more importantly, I think that I'm no longer that aggressive in coming across as that way. I'm able to what I call be more feminine and, and, and be assertive. All right. Very different. And that's why I mean by I went from what I call be, you know, be bitch to sexy boss is I kind of allowed myself to be a strong feminine power because I thought that was a negative to be woman versus a versus a positive for a long time in the corporate setting, in the sales setting. You know what I'm saying? So um, now I just don't hear it because it's not really who I'm it's not who I'm being anymore. So that's why I call being a sexy boss for women. What that means is being sexy and being who you are. Be, you know, owning who you are if you're a man or woman because you're a sexy boss stud. That's why I call it men or sexy boss studs. And then boss is being the boss of your life, being the boss of your brain, being the boss of your, your energy, being the boss of what you say, being the boss of your world, being fully responsible, as they call it, right? That's what I call a sexy boss. It's way more powerful than being aggressive. Like that, that's a, it doesn't work. Does it work? How, did your, how did your sales skills change? Oh, wow. Um, I'm way more communicative and listening versus coming at them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like in, if I'm listening to a presentation, if you're going to a seminar and you're sitting down, right, and they present at you, right, you're sitting there. It's a, it's, a, it's a social dynamic you have agreed on. You're sitting there. They're on stage, PowerPoint, whatever. You are choosing to listen to them. It's a presentation. But in many sales situations, they don't really want to be presented to, they want to be listened to, to figure out this is our challenges, this is what we want as a company situation, personal, whatever. This is what we want. How are you going to solve that? Very different kind of conversation. And so that's where I go more into listening and communicative and less a bit presenting at them. And that's what, that's what shifted. Is that what you saw the men doing back when you started in sales? No, that's just what I started to do. Now, the presenting is what they do. Oh. The men, I think that I was taught, I mean, this is how I was taught in sales, okay? They said, uh, I was 21. It was a Southwestern Bell Wireless. This is Dallas, Texas, 1997, when wireless was becoming, just becoming big. This is still on the, the verge of digital. We were still at the, the, the bag phones, okay? <laughs> and they, <laughs> no kidding, we still had bag phones. Yeah, it really was bag phones and these big, hunky uh, cellular phones, as we called it, the, you know, and then they were moving to digital. So I, I kind of came in the world at that time. And so they said, here's your desk. You know, one of many, a sea of many of these little cubicles. Here's your desk. Here's your business cards. Um, here's the yellow pages. Have fun. <laughs> and here's your quota. 
see ya. And that's basically my sales skills. So I realized it was a turning door, you know, and I was there for actually four years. And in that world, that was like senior, senior, senior. Um, I actually became number one in sales on the entire country um, at the age of 24. Who were you calling on? Contractors and trying to sell them cell phones? Anybody. I was outside sales business to business. So uh, it was uh, anyone you picked up the phone worked <laughs> at that time. It was just dentists, uh, contractors. It didn't matter. Um, that's what you did. You just picked up the phone. Lockheed Martin was one of my clients, stuff like that. So I picked up the phone, and I literally did a lot of cold calling and cold walking the door. But when I was taught, quote, unquote, sales stuff, you know, little meetings and things like that, the training, it was all about how to present. Now, what I learned for me, because I knew I had a disadvantage. I was female. I was kind of cute. Okay, so I got the door, but they didn't want to listen to me. Make sense? I got the door. Right. I mean the door, but they didn't want to listen to me. And so I learned how to basically just to listen to them a lot, a lot. I would just listen to them and listen and listen, listen, listen. I go, okay, well, you need this. And they go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I did it. And then I became number one in the country. And um, I remember when I got the call, my, my boss, I didn't do, here's what I didn't do well at. I didn't do well at politics inside of the company. I didn't know how to do that. I, I didn't understand the politics inside the company. You know what I mean? Um, I just was selling. And so I got this call from my woman boss, who I thought she's on my side, she's a woman, right? And she called me and said, you're number one in the country. We just got off the sales meeting in Dallas. I don't think you deserve it. And it tore me up, tore me up. And then she fired me a couple months later. She didn't like me. She didn't like me. <clears throat> I was 25. I was making like $110,000 a year. Well, 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 but, but you were making her money. I know. Right? Mm -hmm. Or was her compensation was screwed up or something? Was, yeah, I didn't, but I wasn't playing the political game. I wasn't like, I don't know, hanging out with her. And, oh, the politics within the company. Yeah, I didn't, oh, I didn't with do SPC that. Global. Oh. I didn't know how to do that game. I didn't understand that game. No one said, oh, by the way, there's two jobs here. There's a she, wasn't tutoring, uh, she wasn't tutoring you no, on this. She no. wasn't ticking you under her wing. Yeah. She wasn't uh, being your mentor. She wasn't. No. So I became number one, and then she, I got my little award, you know, and congratulations, and got a trip and all that good stuff. And then, then she fired me. And it really threw me. I mean, it really threw me on a lot of levels. One, she was a woman. She's supposed to be in my, like, she's supposed to be my girl. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. right. sea of men. She was in the sea of a bunch of, of men, businesses, business um, uh, managers. So her and I were like one of the few women in the whole company in Dallas. So it was, it was really strange. And so she fired me and, you know, it took me years to figure out there was, I guess, a pol jealousy thing, political thing. I don't know. Um, but I just learned quickly that there's always two games going on. There's the game of the business and then the game of the internal. And you've got to really watch both. And you can't be the same person that it takes to win in the business as well as the, inside the politics of the of the organization. You know, there's two worlds. And so um, that was where I really started to learn and be aware of me and how I presented myself, how I communicated, how I listened to in all different situations. That was just kind of the beginning of the, the shift. So you're, you're, you're silent. <laughs> so I'm like, is he bored? <laughs> Let's change topics. You're, Let's say something fun. You're, no, 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 no. So, so okay. what's the next step? So you're fired. Yeah. You're, you're on the street. Yeah, I was on the street. What um, happens then? You know, it, he was actually really interesting. So here I am, and this, this, was, this is what's going on in my head, and salespeople people can get this. I built this huge book of business, right, over four years from nothing, from nothing. And that's what you built. That's what you made your money on, right? And this big, big, book, big book of business, and that was taken away from me overnight. Overnight, like I didn't see it coming. Was, so there could have been money in this too, right? Because they were paying you out. Were there was there was there reoccurring uh, yeah. fees going to you? I mean, there, I mean, uh, yeah. it was part of your quota. It was part of your quota. It was part of my quota. I was getting, I was getting, of course, um, um, a uh, monthly. When I first got started, I was paid like five hundred dollars a month or something ridiculous, and that got moved up as I was there. I moved up, moved up, and then I was um, my quota moved up, of course, and then I was making more money. So. 
I was doing really well, <clears throat> and I was only 24. And so I didn't know. All I knew was, like, I don't want that to happen to me again, right? That's all I knew. And so the the idea of going back to a big corporate America again and building them another book of business did not excite me because I was like, why? Right? I, I don't, like, I don't, why? Why would I go build them another book of business and have it be taken away from me? That's all I knew, to be honest. Until one day I said this infomercial, no lie, I said an infomercial on the Sunday afternoon. And mm-hmm. then my friend's house, she just got married and her boyfriend or fiance or I guess husband at this point is like flipping through channels. And I see this infomercial. He stopped on it and he went, to the, he went to the bathroom or get a beer or something. And it's like, do you want to own your own business? Do you want to control your life? And it's all I heard. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> right. What, what benefits? What great copy. Right. It's always, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I want to control my life. Right? <laughs> so right. I'm writing down, me to a seminar tomorrow at one o'clock at this location in Dallas, Texas. And I'm writing it down, not sharing it with my girlfriend. And I lie to her and say, like, I'm leaving tomorrow. Yeah, whatever. So I leave and I go the next day at this one o'clock, this, this a seminar. And it's basically a 90 minute presentation, right? Sent down hotel room. They're in front of you. And this is about what years it's like 99, 2000. Okay. Pre nine eleven, and talking about, about business and you should control your life and you don't want people to take your business from you. And this, all this is ringing to me. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I want to build a book of business without it being taken away. That's all I knew. And so they said, okay, $3,000, $3,000 for this seminar that we're going to teach you how to do this thing and make money. And I'm like, whatever it is, I'm in. It was like a real estate thing. And that had $3,000. You know what I mean? So they said the magic words. They said, but your spouse is only 1000 And I'm like, ha ha. And I nudged the guy next to me. I'm like, hey, can I be your spouse? <laughs> and he's like, sure, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> so we went back there. I'm like, hi, I'm his spouse. Now, the people at the back of the table, they knew we were like, they're like, really? What's the last name? Really? That's different. What's the address? Really? That's different, too. You know, so it was quite obvious. Um, and they knew and they were kind of giving me the wink. Uh-huh. Yeah. But they didn't care. I mean, to them, it's a sale. You know what I mean? They knew that if they said no to me, they'd lose a sale. So to them, they're salespeople. So I gave them the, the credit card and put it on $1,000 and showed up the next week. And they kept were, like asking me all these questions. So I was pretty young in the room again. And they kept asking me these questions and they found out what the deal was. And they said, why don't you travel with us? Why don't you come with us? Why don't you work for us? I'm like what? So I started traveling the country doing what they did, going to different cities, walking into a room, room full of strangers, 100 people, and our job was to sell these seminars. I learned how to sell in massive ways with sales, marketing, um, copywriting, persuasion, influence from a sales, uh, from a more of a, a presenter way, right? Um, and I did that for seven years. I traveled the country full time doing that. That's kind of how I got into real understanding, persuasion, and influence. Let's do that. What makes for great persuasive presentations? Yeah, great question. So in person, in person, it is all about, it's all about the energy. It's all about how they present themselves, right? As a person, the energy of them. Here's why I know this, because we travel the country and we sometimes would have different presenters. We ended up with one presenter. We kind of like became became their rock. But I would see different presenters. And the script was the same. Right? The company gave the script out pretty much. And what I learned is we can have three guys, four guys, whatever, four people, same script. They'd say the same thing. One would bomb. One would do really well. And the other two would average. Why is that? They're saying the same thing. Same copy. Right? Same scripting. Mm-hmm. Right. What I learned a lot of it is the tone, the tonality, the energy, the energy of the person, right? Are they low energy, high energy? I'm kind of taking from Donald Trump right now. Low energy or high energy? Are they charismatic? Is that who they are? Like, is that, what's their energy to be like? Because people, people don't listen to half what they say. They're reading you. You know, they're reading a person. Do I like them? Do I, do I, do I trust them? Um, is what they say full of it? Um, do I kind of get what they're saying? Okay, I'm in. I mean, that's what they think. That's what they think. That's all they think. 
And so that's that's what you have to constantly portray in a presentation. Now, go online. I took all that skills of copy, persuasion, influence, and went online right in 2006 and built a business from <clears throat> zero to a million dollars in one year because I took a guy that was kind of average <laughs> and I said, okay, do this, 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 wrote, wrote a script, created him, kind of created a, a new him uh-huh, and a presentation and was able to sell zero to a million dollars in sales in one year in his products. So it was, it's all about the presentation and less about what you say. And online, you have to really hone that in from a video sales letter perspective or a VSL. It's all about imagery and feeling. When you go to one website, you feel one way. When you go to another website, you feel another way immediately. What's the feeling you have as a presenter? Ooh, you have to, <clears throat> as a presenter, um, ownership. Right. What I mean by that is owning what you're selling. Some people say, well, I only want to sell something I believe in. Okay, I, that's a, that's not close. That's close, but not that. That's not it. What it is is you actually own what you're selling. You get it. You understand it. You actually kind of believe it works, right? You believe whatever it does, it does, right? That's what you have to believe. And if you don't believe that literally in your body, then it's not going to come out. People will like, something's off, they're full of mm-hmm. it. Like, right. They don't right, know what right. it is. They can't put their finger on it. They're like, something's off here, but I don't know what. You know, so that's what people pick up on. They pick up on it online too. They do, believe it or not. And that's easier to hide. It's way easier to hide. But they will pick out they will pick it up out of what I call out of alignment energy, the the colors, the feeling, what they say, what they don't say, how their email copy comes, all these things they're listening for. They're look. They're basically always looking for what's wrong, and so you have to cons- consistently say what's right, <clears throat> so it overcomes that. And that's in any sales present presentation, online, offline, phone conversation, podcast. You're constantly listening for what's wrong with Heather, right? But I have to. I have to constantly say, here's what I want you to focus on, and it's less about me. It's more about the thing, whatever we're selling. But usually, I do a ton of what I call people selling, meaning. It's less about the thing I'm selling and more about the personality of selling. All right. So Tony Robbins personality sell mm-hmm. Donald Trump right now. I mean, he's 100% in personality right. sales conversation right now. Right. Like him or not, right. we could go to that. But it's more about if you look at him as a, from a sales perspective, he is selling him. It's 100% personal sell. That's why he's selling. You know, and people. If- I really believe this to be true because the first thing they're looking for is the person in front of me credible. Mm -hmm. If they're not credible, it doesn't matter whether the product's credible or the company behind it's credible. If this, if the person in front of me isn't, they'll never look any deeper. Right. That happened a lot with Microsoft. The beginning. I remember my dad, he would, I mean, Microsoft's coming out, you know, this is 99, 2000, 2000, and my dad was like, he's a horrible guy. He like, he was over, he didn't like Bill Gates for whatever reason. And I just remember going, oh, well, I probably shouldn't get the product. Now, I'm, this is, this is a big, you know, this situation is kind of weird because it's like 99, 2000, my dad's is in my ear. He's a horrible guy. So in my head, I'm like, well, I shouldn't buy his product. I don't know how I made that connection, but I didn't. So I went Mac. <laughs> so I was like, mm. nice Steve Jobs, Dad? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, great. I'll buy all Apple forever. And I did. <laughs> and I happened to be a good choice. But <laughs> it's, yeah. that's so weird because Jobs, was, I've talked to people who work for him. <laughs> right. He was a, it's, he was see, a it's difficult, true. difficult man to work for. Who knows? And Bill Gates true. is like humanitarian of the year, right? He's Mother Teresa. <laughs> right. Like, it's, 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 it's true. It's just that it was one person's perception of a person. And how much it affected by yeah, this behavior, good, this right? Is, so it's a terrific example. A I example. agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how it's parents how clo- are influential. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Thank goodness. Um, being a parent, um, how'd you close them? Close when, where, which situation? In, 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 in. The, if we were talking about the presentations that we were giving, oh, okay. how did, you, how, how would you close the audience? Okay, so it's interesting. Well, it, this is a big, long question because um, what was happening oh. at one point was I was traveling the country and our team was what I call the C team. What I mean by that, we were the, the crap team. Okay. <laughs> and the A team, the A team was going to LA, New York, you know, all these cool places like Chicago. We were going to a place like Peary, Illinois. Like, I don't even know where that is, right? Like, where? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. 
I'm from Peoria. Are you right? really? Oh, see, I knew it. Born and raised. Okay, well, exactly. Like, where's that, right? I, yeah, how far is that from Chicago? Uh, a ways. Okay, well, I just remember driving through Peoria, and I'm like, I don't even know where we're at. So you know what I'm talking about. There's this big, long, there's this big hotel the there. The no big place. It's in the middle hotel. of no place. Yeah. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah. just to give you an idea. So we're going there, and we're speaking of Peoria, Illinois, and our, you know, our coworkers, they're out in L.A., I mean, right? So we're we're getting a different kind of crowd. A, B, they're getting like 150 people being the, in the room. We're getting like 20. <laughs> so who's making more money? Not us, right? They are, right? Just by numbers. So I'm like, how are we gonna fix that? And part of it was our speaker was kind of new. He was he knew the business he was selling, meaning he came from the business, but now he's trying to be a salesperson. Very different, by the way. You can know the business all day long, but if you're not very good at sales and be a salesperson, not a teacher, because sales is not teaching. You cannot you cannot teach and sell. You gotta sell. And then someone else teaches or that's another time, right? So selling. So what I did was I said, well, I want to eat. I'm tired of these ramen noodles. I'm tired of PLA, Illinois, nothing personal. I want to be in LA, New York and Seattle and Denver, right? So I started studying the art of persuasion and closing. I started studying Robert Allen, Marshall Silver, um, Joe Shukerman, um, um, Ted Thomas. These people, these people at the time were like the kings of platform selling. Right? I would study their presentation and then I would go back to my guy, go, okay, do this, do this, do this, at the end, at the end, do this. He, okay. And so we started tweaking, 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 tweaking the, the end. Right, because the end is really key. The beginning and the end is always the the key, key, key. And we went from ten percent to twenty percent. We're now going from Peoria, Illinois. Now we're going to L.A. and we're like, yay, we're eating, we're eating actually real steak tonight. You know, so <clears throat> it really is a difference. There's so many pieces of the clothes. Uh, everything has to be right. There's just so many pieces on a presentation. Um, one, it's the invitation. I invite you to. I'm going to lead you to, here is the closing table, here's the pen, let me sit you down, here, take out your credit card, okay, sign there, okay, give me your credit card, okay, great, here's your, give your credit card to somebody else, awesome, sign there, fill that out, you're doing a great job, congratulations, awesome, you're done. I mean, it is literally hand-holding, like a child. You can't expect people to just do it. You literally have to say, okay, you're ready. Your people wait for yeah. people to say, I'm ready to buy. They're never going to do that. It's rare. It's rare. Yeah, this is a very different world where I come from in the B2B space where it's enterprise sales and yeah. tons of meetings and it takes two. This is a one call close, right? If you, these people walk out of the room, you'll, Done. you might, you might never see them. Right. It's like, hmm. But you can you take can, the same skill set in a B2B sale. And, and I, I actually do a ton of, uh, a coaching right now with a company that does B2B sales. They have a long sales cycle. And the only thing I focus with them on is the next step. There's always a sale. That right, might not be that's right. the, the bottom line. It might be our next meeting. Okay, you never, I tell them, you never leave that situation without getting the next meeting. Next step, next step, next step. And I know their sales cycle is extremely long, but they've got to continually move it as a salesperson, always. Right. What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the next step? What's the time, 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 little steps? You never just leave it to them. Oh, yeah, they'll get a hold of you. BS. You know, you've got to move it. I don't want to leave here without the next meeting. So that's what we did in the, in the what I call um, presentation skills. Right. The, I mean, we, you're right. We would go into a city. We had basically 90 minutes to sell 100 strangers, 20 percent, 10 percent. 10% at least because the company was mad at us. We didn't hit 10%. They're mad at us. So we're like, we got to do 10%. But 20%, they were happy with us and we got bonuses. We're like, yay! You know, so those were our numbers we had to look at all the time. And there was every piece of our being, our energy, our focus was focused on that 90 minutes. It was pretty, it was pretty interesting. Hmm. I learned a lot. We've been here for a while. Sure, I'm sorry. How can, have, no, no, this has been... I, I, have a, I don't know about you, but I feel like we could be here all night. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you're quiet, Pat. So I'm a little like, is he bored? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm a good listener. You are. Thank you. I hope it's been useful. 
<laughs> the information because it really was an amazing, I mean, the persuasion of art of influence to be able to walk into a room of strangers and they're a stranger to you too. And they, you had to remember in that environment, they're also in that place of like, I'm here, but I don't know who you are. You got to prove to me who you are. That's the feeling people are in. You know, they're not there like, hey, whatever you got, let's sign up. Usually it's like, I'm here, but who are you? What do y'all do? Where y'all from? What's going on? Like, it's a very uh, defensive view. So you have to overcome that quickly and move into connection, move into trust, and then move into here's how we can solve your problem. Right. Quickly. 90 minutes. Boom. Right. The value that you're giving them has to be super duper clear. Super. It can't be. It, it can't be muddled by by all any number of things. Confusion like never buys. No. It's one offer. One offer. One offer. One. 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 No. No. Three. Five. Oh, no. One offer. And that's something that a lot of salespeople don't like. Well, we have all these different offers. No. One offer. One. 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 And then you just move from there. You know. But one offer. Now, we did take their names, whatever, we, you know, the, the information, and we had salespeople, it wasn't my department, but outside salespeople call them later. And then at that point, they would offer them like maybe a different avenue. You know what I mean? But in that room, it's one offer. One. This is it. Heather Ann, how can people find you online? HeatherHavenwood.com or Twitter at HHavenwood, uh, Facebook. Heather Havenwood, LinkedIn. I mean, I actually love LinkedIn. I don't know about you, Pat, but I love LinkedIn right now. It's my favorite. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. Are you? Uh, but I've been uh, I've been playing with LinkedIn groups, and they are such they are very troublesome. Oh, troublesome. They're not as they're not as clever as Facebook groups. Facebook groups are quite elegant. It's an elegant piece of software, but poor, poor, poor LinkedIn is just not. It's not kept up with it technically. It really I, I hope Microsoft does something with it when they purchase it. You know, hey, Microsoft or something. You know, one of the things I don't like about uh, LinkedIn is their analytics, right? So sell, as a salesperson, I'm always looking at analytics. It's my pain. Ah. They're not very good at analytics. I can't say right now, right now, I can't go to my page or your page and say, you know, 500 people have looked today. That's right. That's five right. Clicks have gone to this and that. I can't do that. Can't but do that. Facebook is amazing yeah. under the hood. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. I know. With that said, everybody that's interesting is on LinkedIn. I, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, there's a thing about LinkedIn that for some reason when someone get like someone gets an email from me on LinkedIn, they answer it. But if someone gets a message from me from Facebook, they're like, scammer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Right. That's exactly right. It's the view. I know. I know. I know. I think we've had a LinkedIn. Actually, yeah, we did. We did have a LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great sales tool. It's an amazing sales tool. You can learn so much about a person because I call it the resume. You, you know, yours. I think your mm-hmm. yours right now. Yours is really impressive. Um, I spent a lot of time on my, um, I call my resume, uh, on LinkedIn. I spent a lot of time, and I put a lot. I put literally everything I've ever done, ever, ever, ever on there. Um, because people get to see who you really are. It's like it's a big, long resume of who you are. You know, versus Facebook, it's in the moment, in the moment, right? But the cool it's always people, fake. It's always fake, too. Yeah, it's a lot of fake. Oh, look, oh, look how happy we are. I know. No oh, look how happy you are, you know? Look, when, when does everyone really go, my wife and I just had a fight? <laughs> and here, I just took a selfie of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're selfie. We're fighting. Like, no one's taking a selfie of the therapist fighting. <laughs> They should start yeah. doing that. Should have like a fight Facebook. I'm kidding, but um, yeah, that's true. Mm. I just had a friend mm. just get divorced, and it's like all of a sudden they're happy, 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 and then like silence. There's nothing from them. Like we're divorced. <laughs> like yeah. what happened to? Okay. Now sometimes it happens on LinkedIn. Oh, I'm killing it. I'm loving it. Oh my goodness, you're not working there anymore. What happened? Right, right. Well, that's a long story. That's a long story. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was something you wanted to give away to the audience. What was that? So a couple things. Um, yeah, my book, Sexy Boss, I give away three free chapters on my audio book. So I actually did my book in audio. You can only find an audio, audio bowl. You can't get anywhere else. And you can get three free chapters on my audio book, Sexy Boss, um, two ways. One, you can text the word Heather to 72,000. 
if you're in the United States. So I'm sorry if you're not. The way you can do it if you're out of the United States, you can um, enter your email, go to sexybossinc.com, and enter your email there, and you'll get the three free chapters of my audiobook. I will make sure that those links and that book. Yeah. All that stuff is in the show notes. Thank you. Hope this was babbling enough. Was it good? This is quite babbling. This is probably the longest interview I've had in a long, well, that long time. That means it's good, right? That's exactly right. Very good. <laughs> Bingo. I'm a salesperson at heart. I really am. I'm a sales- Heather, and at thank heart. you for visiting us here in Sales Babble. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I agree with Heather Ann when she said that the beginning and the ending of the sale are key to success. Because people are naturally defensive. You should accept it and expect it. And that because people buy from people, once you sell yourself first, then you can sell your products and services. By listening to what the prospect's saying, often that's all you need to close the sale. And at the end of every meeting, there should always be a next step. Now, to get a copy of the Sexy Boss audiobook, you can get her first three free chapters in the United States. Text the word Heather to 72000. Or if you're outside of the USA, go to the website sexybossinc.com and you can enter your email. Or you can go to the show notes at www.salesbabble.com slash 141 and I'll have all of those links there. Well, I pulled the trigger, and I just launched the Sales Babble Facebook group. Yes, 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 I know. I just announced something like this similar for a LinkedIn group only last month. But alas, that is just not working. The LinkedIn tools are not up to snuff. They are not ready for the times. They are way behind. I mean, I would post things in there, and people couldn't even see it. So, despite all of our desires to spend more time on LinkedIn, I'm starting a group. And Facebook. So, so if you go to www.facebook.com slash sales babble, why don't you join the group? Um, or you can find me on Facebook too, Pat Helmers. And um, I will let you in. Again, I'll place that link in the show notes too. That's where we're going to have the conversation about sales. And you know what we may talk a lot about on that Facebook group? LinkedIn. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or write anytime i'd be more than happy to see what i can do to help you and to help your business become successful next week we're going to talk high profit prospecting with mark hunter i can't wait to share that with you but until then take care and have a great and successful selling day have you wanted to stop swapping your time for money ever wanted to leverage your expertise by selling your knowledge to hundreds of people I call that smart, and now you can easily and effortlessly, without a web guy, create memberships, online courses, coaching programs. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash thinkific. Start making money off what you know today. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash thinkific. Our whole world revolves around our smartphones now. You know they say we look at our phones on an average of 150 times a day or more. Look, if you're a small business and want to grow, you need to reach people where they're looking the most. They're smartphones. So text the word START to 72000 now to learn more from our friends at Mobit or go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Mobit. Again, text the word START to 72000 now.